another English lesson. Today we're going to talk about the earth and uh, towards the end of the lesson we'll talk about some idioms that use the word earth or world or planet. I want to just stop and uh, welcome everyone here. I see there's lots of folks in the chat having a conversation. Uh, actually someone in the conversation in the chat just asked me what my name means. So as you know, all names have meanings. Uh, surprisingly, my name means um, of bright shining fame. I've never wanted to be famous or to be someone whose name was, uh, or, or someone who was known for bright shining fame, but I seem to be doing okay uh, as a YouTuber. But anyways, let's get back to the lesson. Enough about me. That's something we say in English. Enough about me. Let's get back to the lesson. Again, welcome to everyone. We're going to talk a little bit about the Earth, um, this planet that we all live on, uh, and I'll go over a few Earth idioms. Um, if you are new here, don't forget to click that subscribe button down below. Um, I do uh, English lessons on YouTube quite regularly. Uh, this is the Friday morning lesson where we have a topic. You can see that Todd posted a link uh, to the form. If you have questions, please use that form to ask the question. Uh, and please ask questions that stay on topic. Uh, I see a lot of hellos in the chat. I just want to say hello again to everybody. Um, and let's get started. So, interestingly enough, we all live on this planet, the planet that we call Earth. So, in English, we have world. So, this is the world that we live in or the world that we, I don't want to say on, the world that we live in, the planet we live on, <laughs> uh, and it's called Earth. World, world, let me say that a few times. The world uh, is everything that we know on this planet. Uh, I'm saying it multiple times because people find uh, world extremely difficult to pronounce when they're learning English. So um, all over the world, people are learning English. Um, all over the planet, people are learning English. Uh, so we don't use these three words interchangeably, but as you listen this morning, uh, you'll hear me use them in uh, different ways. So uh, world, earth, earth is actually hard to pronounce too, isn't it? And planet, planet's probably a little easier. Um, so when we say this planet, we're talking about the earth. There's obviously other planets in our solar system. So the solar system is where the planet Earth is located. So we have the Sun, and then we have Mercury and Venus, uh, and then the Earth, and then Mars. Don't test me on this. I'll probably mess up. And Jupiter and Saturn and uh, Neptune, and I'm going to forget uh, one of the planets. And then Pluto, we're not sure if it's actually a planet, and Uranus. So anyways, uh, this is... A lesson on the earth. So again, many times we use planet earth when we're describing the planet. Um, usually when we're talking about things that affect the, enti the entire planet. So when we're talking about things like global warming or climate change, we say, uh, you know, planet earth is getting warmer. Or we say the planet is getting warmer. So this is the geographical um, you know, the actual planet itself. When we're talking about um, the entire um, planet, we usually say planet Earth, or we say on this planet, things are getting warmer, or we are polluting too much and it's not good for the planet, or it's not good for planet Earth. Um, so it kind of references the fact that it is a planet uh, in the solar system. Um, we make really little versions of the world or the planet, uh, and that's called a globe. So um, a long time ago, I think everyone had a globe on their desk. Um, now everyone just uses Google Earth or Google Maps, but a globe is a really small, I guess you would say, ball, um, which has um, all of the countries and continents of the planet uh, on it, and you can spin it, okay? Do any of you have a globe? Let me know in the chat, just say, I've, I still have a globe. Um, I don't have a globe. I should get a globe though. There's something really cool uh, about a globe. The library in the school where I teach has a globe. Uh, and it's kind of fun because 
Every once in a while, someone in the chat will tell me what country they're from. And then after the lesson, because I'm doing this uh, from my school, I go to the library and I look on the globe uh, to find where that country is. Um, it's a little more uh, fun than Google uh, Earth or Google Maps, but I do that as well. Sometimes someone will mention a country they're from and I'll go look. Uh, but it's a little more fun just to go look on a globe. Um, and a little trick people used to do is they used to spin the globe really fast and then put their finger on it while it was spinning uh, and then say, that's a country I want to visit someday. So um, kind of randomly picking a country. So um, hello again to everyone in the chat. Uh, just a, again, a public service announcement. We are looking at the topic of the earth and we're going to look at some earth idioms later as well. Uh, I'm Bob the Canadian. Again, if you're new here, don't forget to subscribe with that red button and give me a thumbs up. Again, if you have a question, uh, please post it uh, in the form that Todd is linking in the chat every once in a while. So when you see that link, uh, you can post it. Um, there is a question there from Lolly, and I'm just going to say, Lolly, I'm going to talk about your phrase later. Okay, it's actually in my notes for today. So thanks for that question. Um, a world map is, of course, a map of the world that you can hang on the wall. Uh, so it is a flat version of our planet, of the Earth. Um, and on that, you can see all of the same things that you would see um, if you were looking at a globe. But interestingly enough, um, a world map is always split, I think, along the international dateline. I'm not sure. But um, interestingly enough, if you go far enough east in the world uh, at certain times of the day, it will be the next day. So when I do my Saturday night live stream, um, for me, it's Saturday night. But for those of you in uh, China or Japan, uh, it's actually the next morning. So it's kind of interesting how because the planet turns, uh, that's what we have. Most people now, though, we don't use maps too much. Um, usually we use GPS, which is the global so you can see the word globe in there, the global positioning system. So GPS is, it's on your phone. Uh, some people still have handheld GPS devices. Um, but nowadays, we don't often pull out a map um, to look for different parts of the world. Like I said, we usually use some form of GPS or we uh, use our phone to go on Google Maps. Um, here's a little... Uh, Test for me, I have to remember these now. So we have seven continents. So the continents are Australia, Asia, Europe, Africa, North America, South America, and Antarctica. Um, so you can see that there's a slight difference in color here. Maybe it's not showing up very well. Um, but in on our planet, we have seven continents. And again, a lot of you are from this area when I do my live lessons. A lot of you are from this area and some of you are from this area and a lot of people are from this area. So it's kind of cool. Um, I do have viewers from the continent of Africa, um, but not as many as I have from uh, these other locations. So it's pretty cool. I have very few viewers from North America. Why would you think that? Because I think because most of them speak English already, or a great deal of them do. So anyways, continents, we have Australia, Asia, Europe, Africa, North America, South America, and Antarctica. You may actually have different names for them, um, but uh, those are the continents uh, in English for you. Um, we also have, we split the world into hemispheres. Um, so you're going to see the same picture, the same world map here each time. But this is the northern hemisphere. So everything above this red line, which I'll get to in a minute. You can tell me in the chat if you know what this red line is. But everything above this red line is the northern hemisphere. I'm in the northern hemisphere right now. So uh, and currently the northern hemisphere is experiencing summer because as the earth tilts, towards the sun, um, different hemispheres experience summer and uh, different hemispheres experience winter. Um, let me see here. One, two, three, four, five, 
We have the southern hemisphere. Sorry, my papers got mixed up. So you can see here everything below this red line, uh, which some of you have tried to guess. Have you tried to guess yet? Um, so everything below this line is the southern hemisphere. So my friend Pete, who also teaches English, by the way, Aussie Pete, teaches Aussie English on YouTube. He lives in Australia. And I want to uh, talk to Ozzy Pete later today because I have an idea um, where uh, we can use each other's resources to teach English. But anyways, um, because he lives there and it's so far away, it's actually 15 hours difference uh, from where I am over here. But he is in the Southern Hemisphere. By the way, if you are learning Australian English, uh, you should look up Ozzy Pete or Ozzy English. He's really good. Um, so anyways, this is the Southern Hemisphere. And then some of you, hopefully, you guessed what the red line is. Uh, it is the equator. So the equator is the halfway point uh, between what's up here and what's down here, which I'm going to talk about in a little bit, but you can guess what that is as well. But here we have the equator. Um, I see some folks in the chat saying that they love my English uh, channel and they like my videos. Thank you so much. It's really a lot of fun for me uh, to do this and I'm happy that you are learning a bit of English. If you ever want to thank me, the best way to thank me is to subscribe and give me a thumbs up on each video. Um, that's really the only thanks I need. I know some people thank me by giving me super chats. Only do that if you have money. Um, and someone was asking about Patreon this morning. There's more details in the description, but I'm not that interested uh, in you guys giving me money, keep your money. Um, around the planet is our atmosphere. So I'm not going to go over all the different layers of the atmosphere. Um, this isn't a science lesson, but the atmosphere is the thin layer. It, I mean, it seems thick to us, but it's a relatively thin layer of air uh, around the planet, compromised mostly, I think, of nitrogen and oxygen. But again, this is not a science lesson. Um, but the atmosphere is what we see uh, when we look up. The blue sky is caused by light going through uh, the air of the atmosphere, uh, and you'll see clouds as well. So um, that is what surrounds our planet. Way to the north, you have the Arctic. And I wasn't going to get too specific, but this is a good word for English learners because uh, oftentimes it's hard to remember that there's a sea here. So it's the Arctic, Arctic. So if you go way north, um, you will get to the Arctic. And if you go far enough north, you'll get to the North Pole. Uh, so the North Pole is the topmost part of our planet. If you go high enough and you walk far enough through a lot of cold snow um, and all that, you will get to the North Pole. So let me just check if there's questions. Uh, again, Lolly, I see that you're asking a question, but I will get to yours later. Let me answer a few questions here, people. So Dimitro from the Ukraine says, Hi, Bob. Thank you very much for your videos. No problem, Dimitro. Uh, does global warming affect your farming? So here's how global warming affects our farm. Um, in the spring, uh, there's something called frost. That's when it still goes below zero at night. And our frost date is becoming earlier and earlier in the spring. Every five years or so, the frost date, the last day where we normally get frost, moves a few days. Um, and then the other thing that's happening is in the fall, it stays warmer a little longer than it did 10 or 15 years ago. So um, we get really good fall crops. Uh, and oftentimes we have nicer weather in the fall. So for us in Canada, um, global warming, don't get me wrong, global warming is actually allowing our growing season to be a bit longer. I don't want to say it's a good thing, um, but it does let us grow a little bit. Um, Saeed has a question about, let's see here. Um, Saeed says, which one is correct, on topic or about topic? So on topic. So we're trying to stay on topic this morning. Um, the topic, though, is we're talking about the Earth. So let's see here. Uh, Bridge. Bridge Kumar says, Sir, I'm not understanding the meaning of globe. Could you explain again? So a globe, Bridge, is 
to find my page back. Maybe this isn't a great picture of it, but it's actually like you can see this person's hand because it's a very small ball with the, the, the world on it. Um, so it's something that you could, I should have brought the globe from the library. So it's a small sphere or globe or ball that has the earth on it. So that's what that is. Uh, let's see, Anjane is asking about uh, whether everything is the same continent. Let me post this. This is where I'm an English teacher, not a geography teacher. But Ajnye says, hello, Bob, aren't Asia, Europe, and Africa actually the same continent? So when I do a search for the continents, it says, according to world meters, the continents are Africa, Europe, Asia, North America, South America, uh, Oceania, which is Australia, and Antarctica. So we're going to go with that. We're gonna go with what the internet says. Um, let's see here. You said there are seven, yes. So Mauricio caught that. Good work, Mauricio. So Mauricio says, you said there were seven continents, America, Europe, Africa, Asia, Antarctica, and Australia. Wouldn't the last one be Oceania? Yes, you are correct. Um, my bad. So I'm gonna type that in the chat. Uh, it's kind of a slang informal term for apologizing uh, for making a mistake. So instead of Australia, I should have said Oceana. So in the chat, I typed my bad. So my bad. I think when I was a kid in school, um, I would have, I think I learned it was Australia, but that was a long time ago. Um, Marino Oliveira says, what's the difference between earth, land, ground, and dirt? So that's a good one. So um, we use earth to describe the whole planet, but we also plant things in the earth and trees grow in the earth. So earth, land, ground, and dirt kind of all mean the same thing in that sense. Um, like when you jump uh, out of an airplane with a parachute, eventually you land on the ground, you land on the earth. Um, so they are a bit interchangeable, but dirt itself is like the soil, the dirt that you plant stuff in. So that's a slightly different. Um, let me do one more question. Let's see here. Alina says, do you have an idiom like the Russian one? The earth is round, it can turn to you by its bad side. The Beatles used to sing, because the world is round, it turns me on. Um, I don't have an idiom like that, but we'll get to the idioms in just a little bit. Let me get, uh, let me keep going. Remember, we just did the Arctic, so we were just really far north and we went to the North Pole. Um, now we're gonna look at Antarctica. So you can hear, if I say it quickly, I say Antarctica. You don't really hear the C, but it is Antarctica. That would be the very, pro the proper way to pronounce it, Antarctica. And Antarctica is where you would find penguins. Um, I'm not sure if you ever watched the movie March of the Penguins. Uh, it was really, really good. And I couldn't find a picture of the South Pole, but here's a sign. I think this is somewhere um, in South America, and it says 6,248 kilometers to the South Pole. I should go measure that on a map, though, shouldn't I, and see where this is. But the South Pole is the southernmost um, part of our planet. So if you keep going south, uh, eventually, if you are um, measuring your distance properly, you would get to the South Pole. So um, that's a little bit about the Earth. Uh, let's look now at a few idioms. Again, if you have questions, please post them. Um, John Lee is asking a question. I'll do John Lee's question. Hi, John. John Lee says, hi, Bob, may I ask you, who, who is Todd the Canadian? Is he your son or brother? He is just a friend of mine um, that has an hour every Friday morning uh, just to kind of watch the chat. Uh, we were having, uh, sometimes people in the chat um, post things that are not good. Um, they post things that need to be deleted. Um, sometimes they post bad words. Um, sometimes they, the one time we had someone in the chat who was just being mean to other people. Um, so Todd just pops in and he kind of keeps an eye on what people are typing to make sure that we all treat each other nicely. So that's who, Todd is just a friend. Um, people wanted to meet Todd, but we'll see. Todd likes his privacy. So, um, so we're going to talk about some phrases 
and some idioms. So someone asked me the one time, why do you teach English on YouTube? And I said, um, because I want there to be world peace. So, I mean, that's a lofty goal and it's not really why I do it. It is part of why I do it because I, I believe that the more people around the world can connect and talk to each other, the more chance we have of living in a peaceful world. So uh, world peace is something that people often mention as um, a goal for all humanity, something that all humanity should be striving for. Uh, when, you have, when you strive for something, it means you try to get there. And I really believe that um, I would really like it if the planet was more peaceful. I think that if we can all be as kind as we can to each other, I think that we have a chance to have um, at least a little bit uh, of world peace. So world peace is our first phrase. Um, some people use the phrase um, heaven on earth. So this little, um, this little cross here in the middle says a garden is heaven on earth. So we use the phrase heaven on earth. You know, heaven is uh, in some beliefs, heaven is where you go after you die. So heaven is this beautiful place where you go after you live on the planet. But sometimes people live in such a nice area uh, that they describe it as heaven on earth. Like my flower garden is like heaven on earth. Or sometimes people will have a really nice home beside a lake and it's really calm and peaceful and they will describe it as heaven on earth. So I'll hold this close so you can see it says, uh, a garden is heaven on earth. So some people create a beautiful garden in their backyard. Um, and in their backyard, it's just, uh, the garden is so beautiful. Uh, the fly is back from last week. Um, someone joked last week that the fly was my teaching assistant. So uh, the fly is back. So anyways, heaven on earth is when you create something um, like a park or your backyard uh, or a, um, a garden area, uh, anything where it's extremely peaceful and quiet, you would describe it as heaven on earth. Sometimes people, they'll go out into northern Ontario or they'll go out into the mountains in their country and there'll just be this really peaceful place and they'll refer to it as heaven on earth. Um, and then we have the opposite, of course. So hell on earth uh, is the opposite. Um, now you should know, that this is a swear word in English, okay? So most people try not to say this word. Uh, it's considered um, a bad word, a swear word in English. Um, but we do have this phrase, and it is used often in movies, uh, usually to refer to war, um, because hell is the opposite of heaven. Um, so hell is where you go, in some religious beliefs, hell is where you go if you are bad during your life, but hell on earth, uh, would be any situation where there's lots of violence regularly or where things just are not peaceful. So war, when nations go to war, sometimes war is described as hell on earth. Uh, and you may have also heard the phrase war is hell. So hell on earth is the opposite, complete opposite uh, of heaven on earth. Um, let me see here. Um, let's see. Um, so Arturo, I see that you're asking questions in the chat. So first of all, make sure you use the form to ask questions uh, and make sure you stay on topic. We really try uh, to stay on topic. The topic today is the earth. So try to stay on topic. That would be great. Um, let's see here. Mohammed has a question. So I'm going to take some questions now. Uh, Mohammed says, um, some people think that the earth is flat. What do you think about this theory? I, I'm pretty sure that the earth is round. I'm pretty sure that we live on a sphere. Uh, I'm pretty sure it spins um, and that it goes around the sun. So I'm not sure about the flat earth theory, but uh, in my world, I'm pretty sure, I really believe in science and science has shown that uh, we are uh, definitely on a round world. I know there are some flat earthers out there um, that's the English term for people who believe the world is flat. We call them flat earthers. Um, Agnes says, in a sentence, we have to write to the North Pole or in the North Pole? To the North Pole. So you would go to the North Pole. Um, you would probably get a snowmobile, maybe some dog sleds, 
uh, and you would go to the North Pole, definitely. Um, yes, uh, when do you, the pronunciation is the same as the biblical hell, yes. Um, let's see. Nong says, hello, teacher. I have, I have ever heard about the idioms from the earth to the moon. What does it mean? And thanks in advance. Hope you have a great day. Well, I, I'm not sure about that idiom, but when you go from the earth to the moon, it's certainly a long distance. Um, people can feel over the moon or things can make you uh, go to the moon, which means you feel really, really good. And I think that's the idiom uh, you might be referring to. Um, Let's see here. Remember to keep things on topic, folks. Um, what is a bay? Venetius. So Venetius is asking, what is a bay? So a bay, if you have, let me see if I can get this so it's on the screen. Let's say you have an island like this, and then a part of the island goes like that. So this would be a bay. So it's kind of a sheltered area. Um, sometimes bays are places where they will harbor ships or where they will use it to create a harbor. But a bay is usually has an inlet and then there's an area where you can go to. Hopefully that makes my little drawing make some sense, Anisius. Um, what on earth? Oh, here we go. So this is an idiom I'll get to later. But Marie says, what does it mean, what on earth? Uh, can you give an example of it? Thanks, Bob. I'll give you a few examples later, um, but right now I'll tell you that sometimes when we ask a question, we add on earth to emphasize the question. So I could say, um, let me see, what, what did you do yesterday? What on earth did you do yesterday? So that's how you would use it. I'll give you some more examples later. Um, let's go back to, let's see. Oh, Mauricio, I don't have this one in my list, but Mauricio says another idiom, uh, to think the world of someone. So if you think someone is amazing, if you think someone is awesome, if you think someone is like one of the best people in the world, you could say that you think the world of them, um, which means that you just think they are like so awesome, so cool, so good. Like you just think the world of them. Uh, let me go to the next one. So Elena says, could heaven mean the sky? So sometimes we say um, in the heavens, like uh, at night you could say, you know, the, the heavens were filled with stars. So we do sometimes use it as, I guess not sky, but to kind of refer to everything above us. Um, like we could say, uh, let's see. Yeah, a little bit you could use it, but generally you would use sky. I would not use heavens. You know, the, I wouldn't say the plane was flying through the heavens. I wouldn't use it that way. So uh, let's see here. Um, the next question is Ilya from Russia says, Hi, Bob. How do Canadians perceive distances in Canada? For example, in Russia, 500 kilometers is not far, but for Europe, it's very far. Thanks very much. So for me, we perceive distance as you know, if it takes a whole day to get somewhere, that's pretty normal um, because Canada is so big. Um, when we drive to my, uh, my in-laws, that's my wife's parents, it takes us over two hours. That's a pretty normal drive. It's 250 kilometers. Um, if we were to drive to visit my brother-in-law, it's a six hour drive. It's about 600 kilometers. And that would seem fairly normal uh, for us to drive that. Um, we usually go and see them every other year. Um, so I think because distances are so big, um, to drive three, 400 kilometers in one day is not, not a big deal at all. Um, let's see. Next one is from Miroslav. Miroslav says, this world needs people like you. Oh, <laughs> like me, people who give and do not demand in return. It seems to me that interest is the greatest problem of humanity and peace in the world. So sad. So Miroslav, I do have to say though, um, even though I don't ask for anything in return, I have been blessed with a good job and I have a really good wife and I have really nice kids. Um, so I have, for some reason, I have a, a nice life, okay? I've worked really hard to get where I am in life, um, but I currently have a really good teaching job. 
Uh, and I feel like I am not in a position to ask for anything because I don't need anything. Um, I don't know why there is an imbalance in the world. So when I think about what should I do to be thankful for what I have been given, I think I should teach some English. So uh, you should know I do make a little bit of money off YouTube from the advertising. Um, but uh, other than that, um, people sometimes want to give me money, but I don't want money. So anyways, Miroslav, thanks for the kind words. That is awesome. Uh, the next phrase is, so Hila says, are down to earth and earthy, do they have the same meaning? Um, not really. Um, so down to earth means that you're very practical, um, that you, uh, you know, if you were to buy a car, it would probably be a minivan, not a Lamborghini. Um, if you're down to earth, you don't buy new clothes every week. You just wear your clothes till they wear out. But if you're earthy, an earthy person um, really likes being outdoors. An earthy person likes to go camping. So there is a difference between those two. Okay, let's do a few more. Um, again, welcome to everyone that's here. We're doing a little lesson about the earth and some earth idioms. Um, again, I am skipping questions if they're not on topic. Just so you know, um, if you are asking a question about the earth, I will answer it. But otherwise, let's continue with the lesson. So we have a phrase all over the world. Whenever we talk about something that people either use or do in many, many different countries, we say all over the world. So I put on here, so you have Facebook and YouTube. We have Google Plus again, which we decided last week, no one uses that anymore. Uh, Instagram. So you could say all over the world, people use Facebook. All over the world, people use Instagram. Um, social media is popular all over the world. And you could also say, this morning, all over the world, people are watching this live stream. Um, I sometimes wonder how many different countries um, are people, how many, from how many different countries are people watching the live stream? So here we go. Again, welcome to the live stream if you just joined. It's Bob the Canadian here and his teaching assistant, this little fly. Not sure where it went now, it was over here. Um, sometimes uh, people will disappear, and it's a sad thing when people disappear, um, but we describe this as um, that they disappear off the face of the earth. We sometimes use this to describe things as well. Like I could say, this morning I couldn't find my keys. It's like they disappeared off the face of the earth. Um, so this would be an exaggeration because obviously my keys didn't disappear off the face of the earth. Um, but this is a way to exaggerate, um, to uh, kind of emphasize that something has disappeared. Um, but sometimes uh, when we get up in the morning, sometimes it snows in the winter and then it's warm overnight. And in the morning, the snow has disappeared off the face of the earth. That would be a little more literal. Um, sometimes people move heaven and earth to get something done. Um, we also say sometimes people move mountains to get something done. Um, so a good example of this would be um, if Oscar, our dog, was to uh, run away from home, we would move heaven and earth to find him back. Um, so it means that you would do everything that is humanly possible um, so you would move heaven and earth uh, to do that. And your cup is disappeared, yeah. So here's my cup and now it's disappeared. It's disappeared off the face of the earth. Um, let me do a few more questions, folks. Um, thanks for your lesson. Oh, here's a good one. So this is, a, this is on topic. Uh, Ninik Borneo says, hello, Bob, thanks for your lesson. Please explain about the green planet. So we're trying to keep our planet green. Uh, we use the word green uh, to describe when um, we're trying to not pollute. We're trying to keep the planet clean. Uh, we're trying to make sure that the environment doesn't have dangerous chemicals dumped in it. Um, so we want a green planet um, so that things can grow. We use the word green 
to describe a clean, pollution-free planet uh, because when the planet is green, it's healthy. So when you see trees, when you see grass, when you see plants growing, they're all green. Uh, and that means the planet is healthy. So when we talk about the green planet or the, keeping the earth green, um, it means living in a way where we do not pollute. Uh, let's see here. This is a tricky one. So Xiang Wuks Han says, how can we tell the difference between an island and an islet? I don't know. I think one, the islet's just really, really small uh, and the island is bigger. So, um, oh, Saeed is asking, what does good heavens mean? So I added an S there. So this is uh, an exclamation that people use when they... Um, uh, when they're talking. So it's a, an interjection in a way. Well, it's not really an interjection, but people will say, um, did you hear that um, Jane had twins? They would say, good heavens. Like, and it's kind of an expression of, uh, of um, uh, surprise. Like, oh, good heavens. That's going to be a lot of work. Uh, let's see what the next question is. Um, is heaven and synonyms. So people are asking if heaven... Lolly asks this, and then we have the same question from Louise right afterwards. So you guys must be in sync. But the question is, um, are heaven and paradise synonyms? In a way, um, we use paradise to describe, you know, oh, you know, my backyard is just a, a nice, quiet paradise. Or um, this island in the south, is, it's like it's paradise. It's just this really beautiful, beautiful place. So I would say paradise and heaven on earth are probably synonyms. Um, let's see here. Um, let's see. Oh, here's Gabo has a good one. I'll get to these in a minute as well. Gabo says, hello, Bob, have a nice day. Is it considered rude to say, what on earth is this? It depends on your tone. So if I was to say, oh, what on earth is this? That's a kind way to say it. But if I was to say, what on earth is this? That's kind of a mean way to say it. Did you hear the difference? Like, oh, what on earth is this? So you can hear my tone is very gentle. Oh, what on earth is this? But if I was to say, hey, what on earth is this? That's me being like, maybe with my children, I might walk in and all their backpacks are on the floor. And it's, I might be like, hey kids, what on earth is this? You can, that was my mean face. Did you see my mean face? Um, so just a tone change uh, can change the meaning uh, just a little bit. Um, so Descent has a question here. What is the, so this is Dinesh Rathor from India. What is the meaning of salt of the earth? So salt of the earth people, uh, when you say that, oh, that guy, he's a real salt of the earth, it usually means they are hardworking, um, they're very kind. They're usually people that live in the country. Salt of the earth people are usually farmers, um, but they're people who work really closely with the earth and they're really um, honest, hardworking people. Salt of the earth. Um, I think most of my ancestors were real salt of the earth people. Um, so folks, let me just keep through a few more questions. Um, Maybe I'll do a few more idioms first. Let's do this. So we had this one a little bit. It came up in a question. But if you're down to earth, it means that you're very, very practical. You don't spend a lot of money on fast cars and beautiful clothes. Um, when you're down to earth, you're very easy to talk to. Um, Bob the Canadian has been described as being very down to earth. I'm a very down to earth person, apparently, although I wouldn't say that myself. Um, but I would say that many of the traits of someone who is uh, down to earth um, is someone who is um, helpful, caring, uh, kind, generous, those kinds of things. Let me just check the stream here, people. Bars and beautiful. No, oh, it's still working good. So here we get to, um, these have come up a lot already. So we've talked about a few of these. Um, we add the phrase on earth to our questions sometimes um, for emphasis. So I could say, um, what are all these backpacks doing on the floor? 
Okay, I could say to my kids, I, I walk in my house and it's a mess. I could say, what are all these backpacks doing on the floor? But if I want to emphasize it, I would say, what on earth are all these backpacks doing on the floor? So it, it's simply a way to um, really emphasize and strengthen the question. Um, we also use it with how. So you could say, um, how on earth did you guys manage to eat four bags of cookies? So just imagine I've come home and my children have... Notice I use these phrases apparently with my kids a lot. Uh, maybe I've come home and there were four bags of cookies and they're all empty. I would say, how on earth did the five of you manage to eat four bags of cookies? So I could say, how did you manage to eat four bags of cookies? But to emphasize, I could say, how on earth? And then again, you could do it with why. You know, why on earth would you stay out past midnight? So maybe I'm talking to my teenage son and he's come home late and I could say, why on earth were you out so late? I could just say, why? Why were you out so late? But why on earth were you out so late? Or where on earth were you? <laughs> um, and I gave an example yesterday in my one minute lessons, by the way. I said, where on earth did you get that t-shirt? It's wonderful. So they don't always, they don't have to be a negative emphasis. It can be very positive, right? Like, um, Maybe you'll learn a few phrases today in English and a friend of yours could say, where on earth did you learn these phrases? They're very cool. And you would say, I learned them from Bob the Canadian. You should go and click that red button on his channel and subscribe to him. Um, let me check the questions again for a sec. Um, so Gabo is tying the question right in. Hello, Bob, have a nice one. Would you consider it rude if I said, what on earth is this? Again. It's really, really just the tone. Um, let's see. Um, this one is from Leonard. Hi, Master Bob. We'll go with Mr. <laughs> Master's fine, but it makes me sound like I'm, I've mastered something. Bob, what is the correct pronunciation for country type of music and country state? Um, th oh, they're the same. So I could listen to country music. And I also live in the country of Canada. They are the same, exactly the same. Um, let's see here. Um, Gabo, I think I did that one. Um, it's the nature of this. I'm going to do with Abin's question next. Sorry, I'm mumbling. I have to stop mumbling. A mumbling is when I, blah, 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 I don't talk very clearly. Abin says, how can we explain about nature? Please describe for me the beauty of nature by using adjectives and adverbs. So that's a challenging one to do. I should do a whole video on nature at some point, uh, which I will do. Um, let's go to the next one. Salt of the earth we talked about. Um, let's see here. I don't know the answer to this one, Ulysses. So Ulysses says, can you explain about Pangaea continents? So there's a theory, I think, that all the continents were connected millions of years ago and they slowly separated. You'll need to look that up yourself. I am not very familiar with it. Um, Tal says, what does the meaning of this express? What is the meaning of this expression like nothing else on earth? So sometimes you find something that's so amazing, you would describe it as being like nothing else on earth. Maybe there's a little ice cream shop close to your uh, home where they have the best ice cream in the world. You would say, oh, you need to try this ice cream. It's like nothing else on earth. So basically you're saying it's, it's so amazing You'll never find this anywhere else. It is like nothing else on earth. Um, let's see. Saeed says, where is the most beautiful place on earth you've ever been? Well, I went to Kruger Park in South Africa and that was pretty cool. Uh, I also have been skiing in the province of British Columbia in Canada. And that was very beautiful as well. Two completely different experiences, um, but both very, very beautiful. Um, let's see here. Leo from Brazil says, do you have the expression in Canada, the fox took the earth and can you explain it for us? We don't have that expression. So I'm not sure what that means, Leo. So you must have that in Portuguese then. Um, the fox took the earth. Um, sounds interesting. I will have to look that up uh, later. Um, Venetius says, 
Could you talk about natural disasters? So Vinicius, next week's live uh, lesson is going to be on weather and natural disasters. So you'll have to wait one week, but I am going to talk about weather uh, and natural disasters and all of that next week, Friday. So um, we just, you'll just have to wait for that. Um, Hadim, I think we looked at this Hadim, but what is the meaning of the expression to move heaven and earth? So that means you're willing to do everything you can to accomplish something. So some people are willing to move heaven and earth to learn English. Um, so they'll work a 10, 12 hour day and they'll spend the rest of their evening studying. So um, it means that you're very, very determined. Um, so let's see here. <laughs> Even though we don't think the earth is flat, um, Dinesh Rathor says, I'm really glad you got the answer for the last idiom. Could you tell me about the four corners of the earth? So sometimes when um, people travel so much, we say they've traveled to the four corners of the earth. Um, so you know everyone has a friend or family member who travels a lot, who has visited many, many countries. You could describe them as um, um, they've, they've been to the four corners of the earth. So even though the earth doesn't have corners, um, that's, uh, that's something that we say. Um, down to earth, Mary says that down to earth, I learned that down to earth refers to modest people. Am I right or wrong? Yes, definitely someone who is down to earth is very modest, very uh, helpful, very generous. Let's see, we're gonna talk about One Direction. Lee says, do you know the band One Direction? They have a song called Infinity and it starts like this. Down to earth, keep them falling. In this song, down to earth means falling. So in that song, it means um, that they're actually falling towards the earth, I think. I, and it's a little bit of a, of a um, how do you say it? Um, it's a little bit of imagery, like they're trying to paint a picture with words. So it's kind of hard to define um, because I don't know who the, what the original artist intended. Um, Saeed says from Somalia, hello, sir. I would like to know are the, what these places are, Toronto, Ontario, and Ottawa, are they states or cities? So Toronto is a city. It's actually that way <laughs> from here. Um, and Ontario is the province. So I am in the province of Ontario. Uh, and Ottawa is another city. It's actually that way from here. So it's very, very far north and east from here. Um, so again, Toronto and Ottawa are cities and Ontario is a province. Um, let's see here. Here's a good question. Louise says from Germany, what is Canada doing about climate change on earth? So I don't have a really good answer for you, but I know that our government is trying very hard uh, to create a carbon tax to reduce carbon emissions. Um, and it's, I think it's going okay, but our government at the federal level and provincial levels are not in agreement right now. So uh, Canada very much would love to see um, a reduction in the amount of pollution in the world. And I really hope we're doing our part. Um, sorry, I don't have a good answer for you. Um, let's see. Um, Lolly says, can the phrase come back to earth be real, mean to be realistic? Yeah, so sometimes you just say, you need, people need to come back to earth. So they need to, they, their ideas are so crazy, they're not practical. So uh, anyways, let's do a few of these. We did the like nothing else on earth and I talked about um, maybe there's an ice cream shop by you that has ice cream that is so good. It's like nothing else on earth. And finally, we get to, uh, sorry you had to wait so long, Lolly, but Lolly's question at the very beginning was about this phrase, the scum of the earth. So scum is um, when water is really, really dirty, on top of the water there will be scum. It's like foam and gross. It's just dirty on top of the water. When you say that someone is the scum of the earth or a person is the scum of the earth, it means they are not a good person in your opinion. Um, usually we refer to criminals as the scum of the earth. Uh, we refer to people uh, who do bad things to other people as the scum of the earth. So maybe uh, you know someone 
who is a thief, who uh, they are constantly stealing things from people. They don't have a job. Uh, they just take money from other people. You would say that they are the scum of the earth. It is an insult. So it is something that when you say it, is a, it is a very strong insult to call someone the scum of the earth. Um, but that would mean that they are just not a very good person. Uh, folks, I'm going to wrap up. I'm going to go through a few idioms here. And then if there's a few last questions, we have 10 minutes to go. Um, sometimes you have earth shattering news. So when you have earth shattering news, um, it usually is news that is not good. Um, and that changes your world. So sometimes when you find out that a relative has died or a relative has passed away, you would describe that as it was earth shattering news. Maybe you have an old uncle um, who was really healthy and all of a sudden you get a phone call and someone says that he has passed away. You would say, oh, that was real. That was earth shattering news for me when I found out about that. So um, that's another one, earth shattering. Sometimes when you try to make a change, uh, it's just a drop in the ocean. We also say drop in the bucket. Um, so this would mean, um, let's say that you are really good at uh, recycling your garbage and you are working really hard to make the planet better, to make it a more of a green planet. Uh, everything that you're doing could be described as just a drop in the ocean. So um, every little bit counts. That's another uh, idiom, but a drop in the ocean would mean that what you are doing uh, isn't making a whole lot of change. Sometimes if you're having, uh, if you're on a holiday, you have all the time in the world. Um, so maybe you uh, have gone away on vacation and you don't have to do any work. Um, you would say that you have all the time in the world. So maybe you read a book and you have all the time in the world to read that book. Um, but sometimes we use this to describe people um, who approach life uh, as if they have all the time in the world. Um, maybe you hired someone to fix something on your house and they're working really, really slowly. You could say, oh, it's like he thinks he has all the time in the world. Um, so this would be just an exaggeration or an emphasis of the use of time. Um, love is one of the things that we say makes the world go round. So you know that the earth spins, right? The earth as a planet spins. And sometimes we say uh, that different things make the world go round, um, that they are so awesome and so powerful and so cool um, and that they actually make the planet spin. So love is definitely one of them. Sometimes we say love makes the world go round. Um, I think there's other things as well that can make the world go round. So it's just an expression um, of uh, so, something that's so cool, so good that it, uh, it actually makes the planet turn. Uh, sometimes you're on top of the world. So um, when you uh, are excited, um, I, usually we use this uh, when something really, really exciting happens. You say that person is on top of the world. Um, maybe friends of yours had a baby, a healthy baby girl, and you would say that they are on top of the world right now. They're, they're just so excited. Um, it's like they're, I guess, at the North Pole, but they're on top of the world. They're so happy and they're so excited uh, that they had a healthy baby girl that they are feeling on top of the world. So that would just mean that you feel really, really good. And this is kind of a, a funny phrase. Sometimes when someone says something that doesn't make sense, um, like, uh, and you would just say, what planet are you on? Or what planet are you from? Um, so maybe uh, they're talking about, let me think of a good example here. Uh, maybe they say something like, um, we should chop down more trees um, because uh, trees get in the way of me being able to see the countryside. You could, you could say, what, what planet are you from? Like, cause their idea is, doesn't make any sense. Um, you would say this very informal, almost a little bit like slang a little bit, but uh, you could say, what planet are you on? Or, so if you don't understand what someone's saying, uh, sometimes you will say that, like, what, what planet are you from? Um, like, oh, we should spend thousands of dollars on um, Christmas ornaments. <laughs> My wife would say, what planet are you from? We don't need those. Um, let's see. 
Um, let me answer a few questions here and then we'll go. Um, Saeed says, here in Somalia, it is a little bit shameful and disrespectful to call the teacher's name and it's much better to say teacher before the name. How about in Canada? So usually they use Mr. before they use my last name um, or they say sir, um, although less and less students. Um, Hadim says, is it true that Africa is the mother earth? I haven't heard that phrase, but I do know that uh, we are all uh, historically and originally from somewhere in that area of the world. Um, so it could be described that way. Um, let's see. Leo says, many scientists talk about global warming. Can you realize any changes in the environment around you in your country? So I talked earlier about how our late frost date is changing slightly. Um, but I'll tell you my personal opinion on global warming. Here's what I think. Um, many of the things we do are bad for our planet. Okay, so we throw garbage out, we pollute, we drive cars, and uh, there's many things we do that are bad for the planet. And I think we should stop doing some of those things as soon as possible. So um, that's one thing I would say. I think that we need to make our cars more efficient and pollute less. And I think we need to do the same with our factories. Um, next question here. Uh, Anne Selro says, what's the difference between a province and a state? So in Canada, we have provinces um, and in the United States, they have states. Um, so it's just a different name for an area inside of a country that has some self-government. So we have a provincial government and we have a federal government. In the United States, they have state government and then they have federal government as well. So it's just a smaller area. Um, so Lolly says plummet to earth. So we often describe our emotions using the earth, right? Like I was on top of the world. Um, plummet to earth is not super common, um, but sometimes you can plummet to earth with your feelings. Um, but generally it just means that you're literally falling. Um, Ahmed says, what planet are you on? Can we use what earth are you on? No, it's always planet. What planet are you from? What planet are you on? Uh, Alina says, at the end of the earth equals a very far or a big distance. Yeah, so if you go to the ends of the earth, that's how I would say it. Like, uh, he went to the ends of the earth. It's, it's kind of a, like a literary, um, it's um, kind of a description, right? It's kind of an um, artsy way to describe going really far. Um, let's see. So Dmitryo, this is a great question, Dmitro from the Ukraine says, could you please give us an idea on how do you recycle garbage? How are different types like plastics collected? And are there points at public places? So many people complain that I use too much paper in my videos, but all of the paper I use is recycled. Uh, in Canada, we recycle plastics, we recycle glass, we recycle paper, Almost everything that we can recycle, we recycle. And I will say we're not very good at it yet, but we're trying really hard to be better at it. So I think because I use a lot of paper, um, people sometimes think I throw it in the garbage. I don't. I actually use the back sides of these sheets of paper uh, and then all of the paper does go in the recycling and it becomes recycled. In fact, the paper I use is already recycled paper. Okay, um, so that's, that's how we recycle in Canada. We're getting better at it. I know there recently were some problems with our recycling, um, but uh, yes, we definitely are trying to recycle as much as possible. Um, next one, a couple more questions. Precha says, do you call the planet Earth or the Earth? I would say we say, uh, how would I say that? Um, so we live on the Earth. The earth, it, we usually put the in front, although you don't have to, I don't think. Like it's, um, the earth is really big. Yeah, just put the in front. I think that's the safest thing to do. Um, oh, this is a good one. Uh, Ninik Borneo says, we have a beautiful poem in Indonesia. If you fall in love, the world, it is yours. Yeah, I think when you're in love, um, you really the world becomes a better place all around. Um, let's see. And Nathan says, 
Teacher Bob, what are you doing to protect the environment and the planet? Do you recycle? Yes, I always recycle. In fact, at home, we put out more recycling than we put out garbage. So we put out all of our recycled goods, our glass, our plastics, our plastic bags, uh, our paper is all put in one area. And then we have a very small bag of garbage every week. We also compost. I don't know if you are familiar with composting, but that's when you take anything that is that can decompose. So leftover bread and meat and fruit and vegetables. If we don't eat it, it goes in the compost. Uh, and then we usually, uh, that goes to a composting facility. So in Canada, we are trying really hard to recycle and to compost as much as we can. Um, we still have some packaging that we get that is not compostable. But anyways, folks, I am going to wrap this up. If you are here for the first time, don't forget to subscribe. If you come back tomorrow, there will be subtitles in English that will help you watch this video. I do encourage you to watch uh, this video again tomorrow. Maybe just put it on in the background. It continue, uh, it will continue to train your ear. This means crazy, I shouldn't do that. It'll continue to train your ear, but do watch this again uh, and go back to spots where you didn't quite understand and replay it. Um, anyways, thank you so much. It looks like we had 475 people here. That was awesome. Uh, thanks for uh, spending some time learning a bit of English. Uh, and please go out and be kind to people today. That is my number one request. When people say, um, how can we uh, help you uh, do this job of teaching English better? Um, well, go out and be kind to people today. That's what I really like to see. Anyways, Bob the Canadian here. Subscribe button's right there. Give me a like on your way out and have a really good weekend. Uh, thanks to Todd again uh, for everything that he does. And I'm going to 